Hello and welcome to Module 3, Concept Generation, Functional Analysis, System Architecture and Design. In this module, we will talk about applying trade space exploration and concept selection preliminary design. Start off with feasibility analysis. The feasibility analysis and allocation should be conducted iteratively to define and refine successively solution viability, which satisfied the customer needs and to define alternate sets of solutions. They use requirements analysis and trade-offs based to determine that a solution provides high-level requirements are satisfied, and trade-off performance requirements and design constraints. Feasibility analysis is necessary to identify various design approaches or alternatives, to evaluate the feasibility of each of these, essentially how realistic is it to be able to pursue them, and then to recommend the appropriate course of action. Trade-off studies should be conducted within and across functions to support the functional analysis and allocation of performance requirements and to evaluate alternate functional architectures. Trade-offs will always be a necessary component of system development. Consider a large passenger airplane. While the designer would like the fastest, cheapest, safest, and most reliable option, it's not going to be possible to be able to maximize every single requirement. For example, adding more passenger capacity would likely also add more weight, making it more costly from a material and fuel efficiency standpoint. A good systems engineer will conduct an unbiased trade-off analysis to determine the optimal design considerations. In the system trade-off analysis, the different trade-offs are possible as the system design progresses. Those decisions must be made regarding evaluation and selections of technologies, the evaluation selection of commercial off-the-shelf components, subsystem and component packaging schemes, possible degrees of automation, alternate test and diagnostic routines, various maintenance support files, and so on. For example, commercial off-the-shelf has advantages of being readily available and might be more known in terms of usage and performance. The downside, of course, is that they may not have particular nuances or detailed needs that a customized version or even a built-from-scratch version might have. Later in the design cycle, there may be alternate manufacturing processes, alternate factory maintenance plans, alternate logistic support structures, and alternate methods of material phase-out recycling and or disposal. So first, in the trade, first thing first in the trade-off analysis, the first thing you have to do is define the problem. Once that is done, then you identify the design criteria or measures against which the various alternatives will be evaluated, select the appropriate evaluation techniques, select or develop a model to facilitate the evaluation process, acquire the necessary input data, evaluate each of the candidates under consideration, perform a sensitivity analysis to identify potential areas of risk, and finally, recommending a preferred approach. This is a very analytical based decision and needs to be this way in order to truly give an unbiased view of what the optimal solution will be. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail regarding the blanchard fabriki process illustrated in figure 3.26. In this case here you would tailor and apply it to any point within the life cycle. The depth of the analysis and evaluation effort will vary depending on the nature of the problem. At the very top, you start with the design requirements, the criteria constraints, and then you evaluate right below that the three different design alternatives. From there, you use all the different steps that we just discussed to select your alternative. If the alternative is feasible, then you continue on to your system definition. However, if not, you need to go back to the drawing board and reevaluate those potential alternatives. Use the example of the airline where we just talked about, the requirements for fuel efficiency and passenger capacity not meeting up. Alternates might be reducing the passenger space or legroom, doing less luggage or cargo weight capacity. Or they could use more expensive materials that are lighter and reduce weight. All of those may solve the particular problem, but might also create other requirements trade-offs in, in turn. Trade-off analysis involves synthesis. Synthesis refers to the combining and structuring of components to create a feasible system configuration. Synthesis is a design initially among various components of the system. Later, however, when sufficient functional definition and decomposition have occurred, synthesis is used to further define the hows at a lower level. This involves the creation of a configuration that could be representative of the form of the system will ultimately take, although a final configuration should not be assumed at this early point in the design process. Given a synthesized configuration, its characteristics must be evaluated in terms of the system requirements initially specified. 
changes are incorporated as required, leading to the preferred design configuration. This iterative process of synthesis, analysis, evaluation, and design refinement lead to the establishment of a functional baseline, which then in turn leads to the allocated and product baselines. A good description of these configuration baselines, combined with a disciplined approach to baseline management, is essential for successful implementation of the systems engineering process. When conducting a formal trained study, there are several key components that should be included. First, you should list all the viable alternate solutions. Even if you have one preferred one or one desired one that is identified up front, it is a good idea to list and share those alternate solutions to show transparency and also show the depth of the analysis that was conducted. From there, you should identify your selection criteria, i.e. what the ideal solution would contain. For each criteria, identify a metric characterizing how well those solutions would satisfy those, typically on a 1 to 10 scale. 1 would be does not meet at all, and 10 would be optimal and ideal. And then weight the values assigned to each of the selection criteria comparable into completeness. You may pick different criteria, for example, that may not be treated equal. For example, in the airline example, fuel efficiency might be more important or less important than upfront cost, which also might be more or less important than customer experience. If one is very important, you give it a weighting of 10. If one is somewhat important, you give it a weighting of a 5 or 6. If one is important but not critical at all and more of a nice to have, you put it a 1 or 2. The results of the formal trade study should be presented. In summation, when completing the formal trade study, it is good to have full transparency of why the decision was made, what it was, and what the key decision criteria were. This is especially critical in the change management aspects where people may not like the decision based on how they had to give up a trade-off that they felt was more important. By showing this in a formal publication, this presents an unbiased view and takes some of that subjectivity and emotional context out of the equation. The summary description should include alternate solutions, a summary of the evaluation factors, a graphical display of the overall scores, and then a summary of the evaluation factors used with, along with an explanation of each or why the weighted values were selected. In addition, it should also include a detailed description of each of the alternate solutions, a summary description of why or how the specific scores were assigned to each of the alternate solutions, and then a copy of the spreadsheet detailing the analytical model. Finally, a graphical display of the weighted scores for each criteria summarizing the overall design consider trade-off decision. Again, this is important to share from a transparency perspective, but also to make sure that the due diligence was collected. If you're, as a systems engineer, are going to present to upper management why you're presenting one trade-off over another, you will invariably be asked, did you consider this option? Did you consider that one? Why did you select this one over that one? If the results of the formal trade study are truly published and presented well, these will alleviate these concerns and speed up the process of approving the trade-off analysis.